Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Chelsea, just a lady with a bulldog of camera and too many opinions. And today we need to talk about a bunch of these Mon 8 reps, high ranking, mid ranking, brainwash, low ranking ones, which is just sad, who keep posting stories, grid posts, IG videos with the caption, why Mon 8, why now? As if it's a good time to join Mon 8 right now, as they have multiple lawsuits in the midst. And it truly, from daddy and baby Monate's own mouths, the owners, the father and son duo, that like they've recently had like the worst years they've ever had. What are y'all doing? <laughs> like, so let's go ahead and get into this calamity, this true Tom Foolery. Who's Tom? We don't know him. I think we're about to figure out who he is though. And let's watch this video, Why Monate, Why Now? From this girl, lady, ma'am, mom of two, event planning business owner. I think she was possibly getting into like real estate too. I don't remember. Her Instagram is like Pixie or something like that. Do I know her actual name? I think it's Andrea. Stephanie continues to list white girl names. I don't know. I think it is Andrea though, but Andrea, she looks like an Andrea. So let's see what she has to say. Cause it's a, it's a big yikes from me, dog. Hey friends, before we get too far into this video, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Merge Dragons. So as a mom and a work from home mom, I hardly get any time to myself. Let's be honest. Well, just relax when the baby's sleeping, Chelsea. Don't tell me how to live my life. And no, that's when I work. So. A few things that I love to do to calm myself down, listen to a podcast. I've been bedazzling my props lately. <laughs> and I love playing Merge Dragons, which is super fitting that they are sponsoring this video because in this video, I'm wearing my Daenerys wig. So whether I'm hanging out in my office, taking a break from researching, from working, or maybe I've just put the baby down and I'm finally able to just lay down in bed. I'm trying to escape reality and get into the world of Dragonia, okay? The game is an escape from reality and it's set within the world of Dragonia. And it allows players to collect enchanted items and creatures to complete the chains to unlock and upgrade, decorate, and organize their camp. Merge Dragons is a free to play mobile game that is available on all devices. In the game, you can merge dragon eggs, trees, treasures, stars, magical flowers, and even the dragons themselves. So go ahead and download Merge Dragons today for free by clicking the link in my description box or, or go ahead and scan that QR code that is on the screen right now. It's right there. Thank you again, Merge Dragons, for sponsoring this video. Now, if you don't mind, you're gonna get back to watching this video and I'm gonna get back to healing this land. Hello, friends. I have not gone live in a minute. So we just wrapped up an amazing call with our CEO and Oh my gosh, I just have so many thoughts, so many thoughts. And honestly, just, I feel as though, let me start by saying this. I feel very strongly about my journey with Bonnie because I've been doing this for almost seven years. And this business, if you've been following me from the beginning, which I have a lot of people who still follow me, who know me from before I ever even started network marketing, that probably still look at what I do and actually wonder, why the hell does this girl do network marketing? She has another business. Why? Like, what is it about this that just keeps her tied to it? And I think for a lot of people, we don't really wonder that it's the money. You're a top ranking money rep. You have a pretty large team under you. So today, not only are we going to talk about fallacies and highlight those as well. Y'all seem to like when I do that. Also, I get all those graphics from, I think it's, I think it's Therapy Speaks or Psychology Today. It says it on the bottom of most of them. Just kidding, it's called Helpful Professor. <laughs> I was wrong. But so we're gonna we're gonna talk about some of those, but then also, because there's a lot of them, I've already watched, I pre-watched this for once in my life, but I also want to highlight some like cult tactics as well and just some common manipulation tactics too. And then also how good my wig looks right now. I'll have this link down below if they still have it on the store, but my two most expensive wigs, I get this all the question all the time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. My most expensive wigs are two that are real hair. One is brown and like basically looks like my normal hair, just a little bit longer and like pre-styled, just wavy. And then the, this one is real hair too and pretty long. And they both have their full lace and have bleached knots. 
which is more expensive too. And those are from Freedom Couture. Be careful with wigs. You're not gonna get a full lace human hair wig for under like a hundred dollars. Like that's not how that works. Those are big scams. Maybe I should do a video reviewing those scammy wigs. But my most affordable ones are usually under like $120. And those are from an Etsy store that actually used to have a storefront here in downtown Tampa. I'm trying to go through this fast. That is called Paramount Wigs. Again, I'll have both of those stores linked down below. And then I'll put like the name of this one down below too. Too, and I will link it specifically to that if it's like still in stock or whatever, because she changes them like all the time. Platinum Kylie, I think is what this one's called. Okay, sorry, continuing. Ethan's probably like, girl, come on. They may look at network marketing as if it's something that isn't cool or, oh, it's tacky or salesy or spammy or whatever. You know, everybody has their feelings. Everyone has their feelings. We sure do, girl. Notice how she didn't say, I mean, she said spammy, but a lot of times like that can go hand in hand with like salesy, like obnoxious salespeople. Notice how she didn't say unethical, culty, manipulative. <laughs> Quite interesting. I do think that in just my opinion, I don't know this to be a fact, but I think that they had that call. Like she was like, we just got off call with our CEO. I think that they had that call. And then this is why these people were prompted to come on and be like, it's still a good time to join guys. Just like I've said before in the video where I go over all the lawsuit, well, all the lawsuits right now, the ones with Stuart McMillan, the past president of Bonnie. I basically said, and I've said this before, that I don't think that that lawsuit and the counterclaim and all that and those filings that Bonnie is doing back to him, like because they think it's gonna hold up in court, I think it's because, I think they're gonna settle, but I think it's to save face with their current market partners and to try to control the narrative with, and like do damage control and retain some sort of power with the people who are still there. I don't think that this is to, this specific video and these videos that these top ranking people are making. I don't think it's to get people like new people and actually like promote money. I think it's to save face and try to like regain control and reinvigorate like morale and basically just be like, it's okay, everything's fine. Like I'm staying, you know? Cause if you're like, oh, well my upline's staying. So like, it can't be that bad, which it's like, girl, look at your bank account. Is it, <laughs> is it that bad? About network marketing. And that's fine. I totally respect that but I just feel like this happened to me for a reason. And like when I walk you guys through my life and what my life has been like for the last almost seven years since I've started, I think you'll get a better idea as to why I do it and why I have so much respect for this industry, but it's not even the industry, it's the company that I'm with. I don't really care for network marketing. I actually don't really like it. Um, and, I see those girls just like you do. Like I see those girls who are always talking about their network marketing business in a way that to me is just so freaking cringy and it just doesn't appeal to me at all. So then sometimes I do struggle with the notion that I'm in a network marketing company because I'm just so different than all of the other people I feel like that do network marketing. I've had people come to my page and tell me that they didn't know I was as successful as I was, that I don't they don't even know I do network marketing. Um, am I still alive and in network marketing? You know, like people just don't really understand like where I, where I stand with network marketing. So I'm going to explain to you tonight why money and why now is a great time to get started in network marketing. Okay. So I started network marketing when I was 25 years old. I didn't really understand what I was. Okay, so she's about to go into something that we're gonna stop again and talk about, but how she just said, like people don't really know that I do network marketing. However, you have a lot of people below you in, in your organization and your downline. So like, how is that ethical? That's insane. <laughs> that is insane to me. If you are selling something and this is your primary source of income, like I like you, I that's got to be against like some FTC guideline <laughs> that like it's just re it's very frustrating that and like that speaks volumes that it's like most people don't even know that I do it because why you're not prom like you're not actually promoting it or you're not like you are using deceptive marketing tactics and you've recruited so many people, now you're just kind of sitting back and like not doing anything. But then that's a great example of doublespeak because then she goes on later to say that like you didn't work hard enough and like she doesn't even know how she's so successful with this and like great things just keep happening. And, but then you do have to work really hard, but then she doesn't even know what she did and it just like came so easily to her. But then like she did work so hard and it's like, do you or don't you? Did you or didn't you? Pick a narrative and for the love of God, stick with it. Getting into, like I said, I'd never been with in a network marketing company. I didn't even know what it really was. All I knew was like, I didn't want to be those girls because growing up, 
um, one of those girls because growing up, like you would see like, you know, the parties that women would host. It's really interesting as well that she goes on to say that she didn't really know what she was getting into when she joined Money. And she, I guess she said she joined in 2017 and that was the first year of Money being founded. So, I mean, she's been in it for a long time. She probably has a huge, not probably, she does from what I know, a, have a huge, huge downline. So it's just real interesting that she's like, I had no idea what it was. Okay, then who, like who recruited you? That's not okay. Like that's just, de- that's deceptive. Someone recruited you into a network marketing company and clearly was not honest about it. Cars they would drive and I was like, ew, tacky. I had a very fancy career. You know, I worked as a senior account manager for a nationwide coffee company. I was 25 making like $80,000 a year and why would I ever quit my job and let me tell you I went kicking and screaming I quit my job because I had to because I'm not even kidding I so badly didn't want network marketing to to work out for me because I didn't want to be that person in network marketing so I feel like that's really important for people to understand when they look at me because I am like the most anti-MLMer MLMer you'll ever meet okay so I left my career. The most anti MLMer, MLMer. Well, no, like, I mean, obviously that's an oxymoron. That's not, that's not possible. If you weren't in it, if you were against it, you wouldn't be recruiting people into it. You wouldn't be promoting the opportunity right now. The most anti MLMer, MLMer, like, wouldn't you, in that case, like, wouldn't you just treat it like sales and like actually be transparent about it? Because one of the main reasons why multi level marketing as an industry gets, has such a bad reputation is because of the facade, because of the income claims, because the lifestyle claims, because of the girl bosses, because of the lies, the manipulation, the cult tactics. But that's not what you're doing. So here we are. Kicking and screaming, I didn't want to go, but I desperately wanted an out, a quiet, shh, like out to my life. And that was because I was broke, making $80,000 a year. I was overworked. I was overtired. I had two jobs. I was working full time, making $80,000. And I was working at a medical spa on the weekends, you know, trying to make up for whatever. And I desperately needed an out. I desperately needed a break. And at 25, I saw all these opportunities, but I didn't really know how to go about like being an influencer, things like that. So long story short, I'm sitting on Instagram one night and I swear to God, I swear to God, like even now it sounds funny, but I still will try in my mind to find reasons why network marketing isn't going to work out for me. And it just keeps on working out and it just keeps on getting better. And I just keep on learning lessons and I keep on getting more successful and it's all because of network marketing. And so I don't think that I chose to do network marketing. I think that this industry actually chose me and that may sound really corny. It's not a rescue dog. It didn't choose you. Like, does she have a bumper sticker that says like, Mane, who rescued who? No, that's not how this works. And to attribute all of your success in other areas of your life to Mane, that's unhinged. It's not due to the company. It's due to you've recruited a bunch of people and now you're possibly doing what's known as stacking which i am of the belief i don't know that this is true it's just my opinion my speculation whatever they'll still probably try to sue me that all these top people do stacking which is technically cheating in network marketing you're not supposed to do that it is against mostly all the company's policy and procedures and i'm pretty sure it's still a money it's policy and procedures i would have to look though so after i film this i'll look but y'all saying that it's like you've gotten so much, like every aspect of your life has gotten better and like you've gained so much because of the company is so unhinged because it's like, no, it's because of the money there. And sure, I've like, I'm happy I have certain experience like professionally and like on my resume, whatever, like, and I've learned certain things at a lot of places and I love that. And with this job specifically, I've made a lot of, a lot of connections, done a lot of networking and I'm, you know, really happy with where my life is, but like, I'm not out here saying all praise YouTube or, you know, things like that. It's like, no, it's the, it's the work that I've done to do that and what I've put into it. It's just so crazy that they do this, but their lives are so enmeshed and it truly is enmeshment 
with these companies and it really just takes over and seeps into like every aspect of their lives. Again, I said it in a previous video too, how a lot of times they'll be like, oh, your life must be so miserable because like you talk about this online or blah, 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 whatever, you're a hater. I realized the other day, like, do you not understand work-life balance? Like I, I don't get off my computer, like leave, like when I, when I close that door over there, that's it. <laughs> like we're done. Sure, I might like email Ethan or like text him or, you know, me and my researcher might like go back and forth about something, but like, I'm not thinking about y'all. You're not consuming my life and like filling me with rage and hate and, and all that. But unfortunately, because these companies and this industry that we're talking about is that culty, they don't have that separation. And that's really unfortunate. I know it's like not a wild concept and but I just like, the other day was like, oh my gosh, it was like an epiphany. Who's epiphany? I don't know her. She works at Mons Venus. Tampa people, you know. For it, because I came in with no network. I came in with no one really supporting me. I came in with no Instagram following. And I was like this like scared 25 year old who just wanted to make an extra $300 a month. And I just kept showing up because I had this gigantic dream, this wild ambition and this like unmatched work ethic. And that is who I am to this day. And that is why when people say to me, like, how do you do network marketing full time? How do you take care of kids full time and have an events business full time? Because I do all three. And my husband just walked in from a photo shoot. And that is, you know, who we are. Like, that is just who we are to our core. We just work really, really hard. But um, I started out and I just said to myself, yeah, $300 a month. That's it. And I remember five months into my business, I had to go to Hong Kong to work for my corporate job to train the staff of the Ralph Lauren Cafe that was opening there. And that was like the biggest opportunity I had gotten thus far. And I was building up my money business while I was working full time. And I got to fly first class through the company that you know, Ralph Lauren that flew me there, but I wanted to take my dad with me. And I remember I had the money to fly my dad first class because of money, not because of the career that was flying me to Hong Kong, not because of anything else other than the shampoo business that I had started. So in this company, again, like, it just worked out for me in the way that just because of this business, because of this shampoo company that I had started, you did not start money. Your last name is not Erdinetta. You are not one of the founders of the company. Again, double speak. I hate it. Saying one thing and then saying something that directly contradicts it. Did you start the company or did you join the company? Are you a salesperson for them and just selling shampoo and is your success based off of just your sales? Or are you the owner of the business? You started this company. You're recruiting people into it. You have a team and a downline. Like, did you get to where you are by your personal sales? Or did you get to where you are by, let's say it together, recruiting people into a, yeah, into a pyramid scheme. Good job. I was applying myself and I was showing up, but I was trying to find all the reasons why I shouldn't do network marketing. And even to this day, as my husband who just walked in, I still try to convince myself that like network marketing isn't gonna be what I do for the rest of my life. But I can't negate the fact that I just believe that I'm here for a bigger purpose. I feel like I'm here to like serve others and to help other people because what this has given to me, what Monade has done for my life, I wanna help others do. So. I just want to fast forward. All of these amazing things happened for me. I came into the company. I hit a hit director in a year, which was a multi five figure income every month. I guys, I was making like crazy money and I still wouldn't quit my corporate job. Like I was such an ass. I wouldn't quit until I had my son and I had to quit because I wanted to be a full time mom. And then I just went full force in my business because I was home with this little baby and I hit the top of the company and I couldn't really explain how the heck I did it, but I showed up every day and then I kept going. And then I hit the million dollar club in less than four years and I couldn't explain it. I didn't know how it happened, but I just kept on showing up. And then, you know, I started promoting out more directors and one of my girls on my team just hit the million dollar club and I can't explain it. I don't know how I did it, but I just, I just kept showing up. And now here I am. I don't know how I did it. I just kept showing up. I don't know what happened. I can't explain it. No, you can explain it. You literally just did. You kept promoting more directors, meaning that the people below you have been ranking up. Because allegedly, when you recruit someone, you are placing them in the downlines of those people so that they rank up. If they rank up, you rank up, and then so on and so forth. So please, for the love of God, stop saying like, I don't know how happened. I just saw shampoo. I just saw shampoo girl. I don't know. I don't, got, I don't know. I don't even got pockets. I don't know what's happening. I just, just full-time stay-at-home mom. Also, Y'all know I'm a stickler for when people try us with that cow poo. I'm trying to filter myself more because we be getting demonetized. Oh, work from home with your babies. Be a present mom at home. We all know that you have the iPad in front of your playpen and your kid is just watching Miss Rachel or Bluey. 
or playing with their toys or pretending to read a book or chewing on like your lipstick container. It's literally what Bean does before his first nap. Because I do admin work and he sits here and we do our like ABCs and learn new tricks and stuff. But being a work from home mom and like, yes, I understand like I, I probably do more like attentive work than them. Maybe, I don't know, probably not. But it, it's just wild that they're like, work from home, it's amazing with your kid. No, it sucks. And then when they're like, I just wanted to be a full-time mom. You are. So are you saying that my sister, who is a v at the VP level of a very huge global company, she's a bad and basically raised me, that's why I am this way. No offense, mom, sorry. But she has two kids and her husband works too. He's a civil engineer. Is she not a full-time mom? She's traveling for work today and I think tomorrow. Is she not a full-time mom? What does that mean? Like saying that, it just me off. Makes me want to say Dracaris. Don't make me start speaking high Valyrian because I will. Now here I am. I feel like I'm finally getting through a very hectic season, a very busy season in my family's life, becoming a mom of two. I started another business, guys, and I'm not even kidding. I started my other events business because in the back of my mind, I was like, all right, I had the million dollar club. All right. You know, I promoted out all these people. Okay. I grew my organization. All right. I'm making all this money, but like, I can't do this forever, right? Like network marketing isn't gonna last, like everyone says, because that's what everybody says. Network marketing isn't gonna last. That business isn't gonna last. It's all gonna crumble down on you. It's gonna fail. It's not gonna last forever. And I'm still wondering when, you know, it's still paying my mortgage. It's still paying for my cars. I don't, you can't explain it. I don't know why it's happening, but I just keep on showing up. And then all these things keep happening. And I know it sounds funny, but this is the truth. This is the truth. Even when, you know, I felt like I got, this might sound funny, but I feel like I got a little, too big for my britches. I just, you get an ego, right? And it's normal. When you, when you become successful for the first time, you get an ego and you kind of like lose your way for a little bit and you forget the things. So to answer your question, Angelique, people forget the blessings that they've been given because they develop an ego through success. And when you're so successful for so long and you never go through any hardships, you tend to forget and you tend to forget, or you you forget the perspective of what it's like for a market partner who's just starting, someone who's just looking to make $200 a month like you were when you were beginning. So I think people who, and listen, people break up, families fight, it happens. But I just believe at the end of the day, if you're not able to put your tail between your legs and humble yourself, you will never truly be successful long-term. So I feel for the people that can't get their egos in check because for a while I had an ego and I couldn't get it in check and it was making me miserable. And then the minute I just kind of relinquished power and control and just said to myself, you know what? It's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. And I'm going through a season of life that's very busy and hectic, but I can't explain it. It keeps working out and I just keep showing up. And for me, that's really just been the motto in my money business is it's not always gonna be linear. Success isn't always gonna be linear. You're going to have ups and downs. You're gonna have setbacks. You're gonna have comebacks. It's all gonna happen. Um, but the one thing that I feel so strongly about, and this is why I choose money and not every other network marketing business, um, I just believe the heart of money is so good. The family is so amazing. They care so much. Everyone makes mistakes. No one's infallible. It's not always gonna be perfect. But the fact that I can, even after feeling like I've gone through somewhat of a slow season after really diving into motherhood and being present with my kids, knowing that I can text the CEO to hop on a call with 55 of my business partners on my team and in the morning, Monday morning, and he says, yes, I just don't know where else you're going to get that feeling because that's really important to me. I remember not being able to go on a trip and I wrote in that it was because I had just had my daughter and I was exclusively breastfeeding and it was very stressful for me. And then they sent my daughter a designer outfit in the mail. It's just the little things. It's just, it's not even that. It's not the designer stuff. It's the little things. It's the communication. It's the transparency. It's um, always keeping us in the loop. And you know what? 33% of every business is always leaving. So if people want to go and they want to explore other parts of themselves and other businesses, that's their prerogative. I just have never felt like it was ever Moni or the company or the family who's ever made me feel like I wasn't good enough to be here or welcomed here. It was more so the people that maybe I was paying too much attention to, comparing myself to, um, the ego part, uh, the grass is always greener, going through hardships, and maybe even recognizing that I wasn't doing what I once had to get me the results that I was once getting, okay? I think people wanna believe that you can build out a business once and if it's successful the first time, that's all you ever have to do. But I'm here to tell you, you have to be able to uh, recreate and reproduce success over and over and over and over again. Because 
as we know, business today is not what it once was. Um, I don't know anybody who can do what they did in 2017 when we started the same exact way to a T and be successful. We have algorithms today. We have new platforms today. We have a post-pandemic world where people value getting in person. People value relationships. We have a generation of, of kids. I promoted out all these people. I hit the million dollar club. How do you hit the million dollar club? Cause that's a million dollars in commissions paid out to you since you joined the company. And she said she made that within, within when? Within what, four years of being there? However, how do you hit that? You don't hit that if you aren't recruiting people. So again, she's not even talking about the products. It's all about recruitment. I've built out my organization. Downline, you've built your downline. That's what that is. All these things keep happening. I'm just a little baby shampoo girl. I don't know, I don't know. You know, you know. People break up, families fight, it happens. Well, sure, that those are, those are true things. Water is also wet. That's not what we're talking about though, girl. You're not a family and you're not in a relationship with, <laughs> with this company. So that, I feel like that right there just shows like how culty this is and how this woman does have a, in my opinion, not healthy relationship with money. This is really interesting what she just said. I don't know what the person asked or who it was, but just finding it interesting that she's like, yeah, you had to humble yourself and you really need to, you know, just relinquish control and understand like success isn't linear and you're going to have ups and ups and downs. And it's giving, well, if you're not like selling or like making money or whatever, like you need to just deal with it and get over it and understand that like you're going to go through a season of life where you're not making that much money. But then why continue to promote that? Like, this is amazing. This is the best thing to do. You're going to make so much money. And why do that then? And yes, in a commission-based position, like that's completely normal. Absolutely. But that's not what y'all are promoting. Everyone makes mistakes. Everybody has those days. That's true. However, it's a mistake in business. And is it a mistake <laughs> if you're mis allegedly mishandling money and accusing someone who spoke out of being a drunk and making a toxic workplace environment and cutting commissions? Are those mistakes? Because a mistake is something like you don't have the intention of doing. Seems like they knew what they're doing. So it's just like a bad choice. It's not, it's not a mistake. And it's also like, yeah, they really care. They care about money. They don't care about you. They care about money. So just to put this in perspective, she's saying that the CEO really cares, right? She doesn't know how like any other company and other whatever, where you'd be able to text the CEO and jump on a call right away, like with your team. The reason why you're able to do that and why a normal, not MLM style company wouldn't do that is because an MLM, specifically Monet in this case, their sales and their success is reliant on them having market partners, reliant on their contracted employees. So yeah, it's like not surprising that corporate office is basically up in flames right now. That's a joke. Of course, he's gonna wanna do damage control, duh. But you have that access to that person, not anyone who joins. So also that's not relatable and that's not why someone should want to join. Girl, who's making you say this? Is daddy money and baby money, like am I about to see the reflection in the window of them just holding up cue cards? Blink twice if you need help, if you want us to get you out because I mean, we we can we can try because holy crap, this is, I don't wanna say staged, but manufactured is what it's giving. And that's upsetting, that's sad. Are you sure you own your own business or is someone else pulling the strings and telling you what to say? So she was exclusively breastfeeding. She had just had her daughter. She wasn't able to go on a trip, but they care so much. They sent me a designer outfit for my daughter. If they cared so much, they'd give you maternity leave. <laughs> they'd give you benefits. They, d they don't care. Someone saying that network marketing isn't what it once was or a company as successful as it once was or isn't the opportunity that it once was. And then having the response of, oh, well, you just shouldn't be a business owner. Being a salesperson and s or s slash and or joining a multi-level marketing company as a contracted sales distributor, salesperson, whatever, does not make you a business owner. It also doesn't make you an influencer. You do not own the business. She, yes, owns a separate business, of course, but you, you're not signing, you're not signing those payroll checks, girl. You are not a business owner.
it's interesting because what she, I mean, what she was kind of just saying, it does apply to like business in general. Yeah, because I mean, sh she's right in one sense. Again, they'll say these like general things that are true, but then it doesn't apply to network marketing. It applies to like the real world. So in terms of, you know, your marketing tactics that worked 2017, 2015, even 2020, probably aren't going to work in 2024. That's just trends change that that's just like a no brainer. So yes, you have to be able to pivot, especially with like the content you're making and what you're selling and all that. Right. But then she relates it to network market. It's, it's strange what she's saying, because it doesn't really apply or make sense. Have as a business owner is being adaptable. Okay. So if you can't adapt and adjust as a business owner, you just probably shouldn't be one. You should probably go work for somebody else, work your way up, make $150,000 a year if that's what you want to do and just be happy with that. Just go work for someone else. Just go make $150,000 a year. Like it's not that hard. Just go get a normal job. So sure, as a business owner, you gotta be able to adapt to trends and changes in marketing and the you know business landscape and sales tactics and technology evolving constantly and different tools that you should be you know utilizing and all that. And absolutely, however, being a Mon 8 sales rep, you you don't do any of that other than like social media trends, sure, but you're not a business owner. So that doesn't that doesn't apply here, girlfriend. And like you know that. Don't be dumb. For the love of God, don't don't be stupid, stupid. Come on. Also, her name is not Andrea, it's Alexandra. I was so close. Almost. I guess Andrea could be shorter name for Alex. Sure, let's go with that. You need to be able to be coachable and be able to adapt and be able to pivot and like do whatever is thrown at you. As an employee, sure, be coachable, but like having to put up with like all this crazy shit that's going on in money. No, not really. Like if you want to leave, leave. It's it's wild that they, what they're saying, if you catch like little pieces of it, you can see, in my opinion, like, oh, wow, they're really trying to say without saying to her downline, you need to just go with it. And if you're not just going with it, then you're not going to be successful. And like, you need to stick it out because if you don't and you leave and she loses part of her downline, then she won't be able to possibly fund her other business and her lifestyle. But then also, you know, she won't be making. I think for the people that want to argue and like have negative negativity to say, I would love for you to switch places with someone who runs a really successful money business for one day and then talk to me. I think the people that are the quickest to criticize are the ones that are the slowest to show up. I would love to know you know, how many people are willing to get on their Instagram right now and talk like this, you know? So me, I've made an entire channel about it. You'd think they'd learn or stop or God forbid, like take a month off guys, give me a break. Trade places with me for a day. See, like, then you wouldn't criticize me. No, I probably still would. I disagree with what you do. I don't know you personally. I don't want to, I don't need to. It's not you, like, personally. Like, these are not personal attacks. This is regarding what you do. Like, it's a professional attack. <laughs> it's not an attack. Calling out behavior is not an attack. If it feels like it, then you need to figure that out. And maybe that's because you know what you're doing is wrong. It's not because I'm wrong. Because as y'all know, I'm rarely wrong and I never mispronounce anything. Did I just mispronounce the word pronounce? I think I called, I think I said pronounce. The people who are the fastest to criticize are the ones who like don't want to work. And it's like, no girl, just because someone's criticizing you doesn't mean that they're not working or that they're a loser or they're miserable or that they don't make money or that they want to have your life or did I already say jealous? A jealous hater with a broke mindset. No. And then also another thing that they'll say is, and this is what Jesse Lee Ward would say a lot too, is don't ever take advice from someone who you wouldn't like switch lives with them. That doesn't make sense. I don't wanna switch lives with my sister. I'm happy with my life. Am I gonna take her advice on certain things? Yes. I don't wanna switch lives with my dad. I don't wanna be married to Linda. She's crazy. That's where I get it from. Am I gonna listen to his advice on certain things? Yes. It, it's, in, it's such an insane and just nonsensical ideology that truly does not make any sense. Yeah, I don't, I don't really listen to what people have to say because 
my success is determined based on how many sales I make. If I choose to market another person's product, that's my prerogative. You know what's not pretty or beautiful or iconic at all is the percentage of her total commissions for a certain month in 2021, I think it was, was from her own personal sales. So let's look at this real quick. So she, that month, I'm, I forget which month this was. I think it was like January, 2021 or January, 2022, something like that. I'll link the video below of which one this is from because I literally just took a screenshot from that video because I couldn't find this file. Distributor ID number, her first and last name. She began the month at rank SED, ended the month at rank SED. Uh, the highest she had ever made it to is SED because that's the highest you can make it to. Her Unilevel bonus that month was almost $13,000. Her group volume bonus was almost $400. Her generation bonus, which is not from your sales, it's from you having a downline generations below ya, was almost $28,000. And look at your personal sales bonus. Hmm, $127. Oh, and then you have a matching advance bonus, which was $1,100. And then your car program bonus, which was $1,000. And then smart start matching bonus, which was $150. And your total for that month was $43,303. 0.29%, less than 1% of which came from your own personal sales for that month. Don't believe me? I don't care because it's true because that information came directly from the money internal revenue report. You know, I feel as though I run my own business and I do have another business that I run all by myself. I feel as though I run my own business. Do you run money? <laughs> so you think you're the CEO? Then why did you text your CEO? Is he the CEO or are you the CEO? Who is on first? That I started because of everything that I learned in money. So I, I don't really know for the people for the people that have failed in this company and aren't successful, I just don't understand um, what that can mean for you in a professional sense because everything that I've adapted and adopted into my, my secondary business, my events business, that has gotten that business to where it is today is because of what I've learned in Moni. So I will continue to choose Moni. Um, I feel bad for the people that get so blindsided by what others have to say instead of just truly working for themselves. Another thing that she said that we didn't really cover at all and that she's about to talk about right now is how she's saying like, she feels bad for people who get blindsided by what other people say, which is basically cognitive dissonance. But what she's saying and what she said before was like, I don't really watch the news. And like, we talked about that on the call. I think she's about to talk about that right now. She said she doesn't really listen to the news or like what other people have to say. You can listen to what other people say and not have it influence you. You can listen to what other people say and not instantly believe what they say or like have it like change your mind and your values and stuff. But it's you can also just like fact check what other people say and compare it to what you think is true or what you what you believe to be true or what you know is true. And, you know, facts, statistics, all that. But think about it. What she's describing is truly an echo chamber and like that's that's not safe that's not good and y'all can say all day long like oh well you know you have an echo chamber and blah 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 because like you will block people no dumb dumb i have a life off of off of this off of this little square this little rectangle i'm in i have a life and i surround myself with people who have different beliefs and ideas and values and all that we are not in an echo chamber here this is not real life because if you did it's like watching the news and that's kind of what ray just said on our call you know, if all you do is pay attention to the news, aka what other people are posting on social media, of course, you're going to be biased. Of course, you're going to be influenced. For me, it's more so about this is so wild. <laughs> so on that call with Ray, baby money, were they just talking about like, hey, don't listen to what anyone else says. Only listen to what we say. Should they look at the, the court filings then for y'all's counterclaim with Stu? Because in that you say that it's Stu's fault allegedly, apparently, whatever, that's my understanding of the legal documents, that money has had like a not great years and has been declining over the last few years. So like you admitted that. So you can't keep saying it's the best time to join Monet. Why? Because it's crumbling? Like because everyone's leaving? That doesn't make sense. And just because, again, just because you access or look up or listen to other information or consume other information does not mean that you're going to be biased. You're biased by not opening yourself up to that information. And again, you don't have to like apply it, accept it, whatever, but like, girl, come on, get it together. For me, it's more so about, you know, what have I done to help me get to where I am? And that's really what I teach other people who work in this industry and in this business. I cannot be swayed by social media. I cannot be swayed by people I don't know. Um, people have always tried to get at me. 
so you're brainwashed. You can't be swayed by social media. You can't be swayed by people you don't know. What about Tony Van Sh Van Sh Van Schweet? Is that the girl's name from Wreck It Ralph? <laughs> That's why 33 people are watching right now. People have been trying to get at me since 2017 <laughs> and try and like maybe talk some sense into me or tell me about myself or my business. Um, but at the end of the day, when I rest my head on the pillow, I would much rather have people talking about me than not. This is really interesting too of, I've had people trying to like talk sense into me and get at me and talk about me and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it, do you think you should maybe see if there's like some legitimacy towards that though? Because sure, I mean, I could see the same thing of like, back in the day when I first started my content, like e even Tony didn't even realize like what my videos were ab about and he kind of did but he thought I was just like he thought I was just making fun of these girls and that's it and then he didn't realize like the cult aspect and he like heard me talk about it one time because I've always said like I don't sure subscribe but I don't want you to watch my videos please don't do show him like uh trailers and stuff and like things that I'm working on and like little like creative things I do and I love that but I don't want him to watch my channel and I don't especially when I'm there that's cringe go away <laughs> I remember like my mom too was like Chelsea you're like going down like a not a great path and I'm like, Linda, have you actually watched any of my content? So I sent her a video of something that was more like educational and I sent her like a deep dive. And then I sent her something else that explains like a video kind of like this, how we focused on more of like fallacies or double speaker, you know, showed facts and all that instead of one that was like way more spicy and all that, right? And after that, she's like, oh my gosh. And I remember I showed her like, yeah, I, you know, I got home from like the PO box or something. And I had like, I don't want to call it like fan mail, but I had like, I had some viewer mail that was sent to me and she's like, what's that? And so I like read it off to her and she's like, oh my God, like this is amazing. So it's important to see, like to, to make sure that people, yes, understand what you're doing because if they have this idea of what you're doing, they don't actually understand it and then, okay then they're misinformed, that doesn't that doesn't count. But Alexandra, people do understand what you're doing. It's network marketing, it's not hard to understand. It's recruiting people into a commercial cult, a pyramid scheme, a scam, an unattainable and absolutely unsustainable business model for success and it's, you're not making money off of your own sales. It's not your work, it's your downlines, which you're about to contradict yourself again regarding that statement in a second. Absolutely brainwash. The people who still stay in to money, in, in money, after this whole sh are so brainwashed. And in my opinion, and y'all can leave in the comments down below too, how long do you think money is gonna last after, like after all this sh they're in right now? Do you, I, I personally don't think, I think money is gonna go in the next, again, this is just speculation. I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't last like another two years. I would not be surprised. I step into that light and I own that and I know that about myself and that's fine. Um, because I want to be successful and the most successful people are always going to be, uh, criticized for anything that they do. So it's kind of like, if you think it's my first rodeo, I've been here a while, I've been here a while. And you know what? More importantly, I have two small children that tell me about, <laughs> tell me about myself every single day. So it's kind of hard to get to me at this point when, you know, I've been hearing these kind of things for a long time. And I love that the comments are like sounding off right now. And it makes me feel like I'm, do <laughs> I'm doing something right. I'm stirring some sort of pot because at the end of the day, I would much rather have people talking about me or care than not because when people stop paying attention is honestly like when you stop having a business and you lose your edge so that doesn't make sense <laughs> if you were a content creator yeah sure maybe you know if, if people stop paying attention to you yeah you don't you're done so but as someone who just sells shampoo that doesn't make sense like you've lost your edge and people stop talking about you and people stop caring and blah blah, blah. it's like that's not how that works why I'm just going to kind of go into why I believe now is such a good time because you're brainwashed and you want to maintain the money that you have coming in from this company. We just go ahead and stop the video there is because um, when I think about it, there's no other network marketing company out there that has what we have and we are the number one luxury premium hair care in the world. Um, but to mention, we don't have any other competitors in the network marketing space. So we do sell skincare, but our primary product is hair care. So I feel like we don't really have any competition in that sense. Um, and I know for me and my clientele, like what it's done for us and how amazing it's been for us and how people continue to show up in order. So that's number one. I just feel very strongly about the hair care industry and network marketing in general. Um, number two, I would say- This is super interesting because <laughs> They make this claim of we're the number one premium luxury. I've never heard them say luxury, really. It's more so we're the number one premium hair care company in the world. That's false. Just because you say it, that doesn't mean it's true. I am the number one commentary YouTuber in the world. 
Ethan, change my Instagram bio. Like, forget Cody Co., forget any podcast, successful podcast ever. If you Google something like that, like typically you'll be able to find other sources for that information on the interweb. So the first thing that pops up is obviously a sponsored thing. So that's irrelevant. First thing that pops up is Reddit, the anti MLM <laughs> page that says money rant, number one premium hair care line. And basically just like debunking that and saying that it's and then people also ask, and you know, there's a little drop downs. And this one says, as the number one premium ha hair brand, hair care brand in the world, Monate offers the opportunity to be part of a community that can change lives, both for you and others. But that's from Monate. <laughs> that's from their website. I'm not gonna believe that. No. And then the next one is, what's the number one hair brand in the world? Hmm. Interesting. Beautypackaging.com. Never heard of that website. Says Olaplex is number one, followed by GHD and Bay Babyless. Cosmetify's most popular hair brands. So money, it's not there. Which is the best hair care brand? L'Oreal Professional Unlimited Shampoo. And that's from like Amazon ratings. What is it? Saint Botanica Pro Keratin and Argan Oil Shampoo. What is the number one hair growth product line in the world? People.com. After testing 30 hair growth shampoos, we can confidently say that Vegamore Grow Plus Advanced Replenishing Shampoo has the best overall formula for thickening hair and improving length. Globally renowned companies that are leading brands of hairstyling top 10 by annual revenue. They'll be vague and say like number one premium luxury hair care. Like without a doubt, that's going to be L'Oreal because it's a huge conglomerate that owns about 47 other companies. And then I would think Olaplex is on that list too. And honestly, like weighs really good as well. I love those products. I started using those recently and oh my God. It's amazing. Yeah. So like, it, is it number one in growth? Is it number one in like, you are the biggest company in terms of employees? Is it number one in regards to like the best quality products or in regards to revenue? Like what number one at what? What are you succeeding at other than being a cult? So again, wrong. It's, I would say without a doubt, it's probably L'Oreal. Like it's, that's not a crazy statement, right? And like I said, they own so many other companies. It's wild. Have y'all ever seen that like infographic of like those like top beauty brand conglomerates that, and then like it, go, it like goes down to like what else they own and then like what else they own. I love those. Also the ones with like soda companies and then with like snack brands or and then like media conglomerates. And as you like go up, there's like always only like four or five like main ones. It's crazy. I love it. That when you think about it, you know, I've been here for seven years. You have to be 18 to start in your business. Um, if I plan to do this for the rest of my life, which I do, there's always going to be a new generation of people that are going to be exposed to this opportunity, learn about this business, um, and really want the advantages of that. Especially, I feel like the generations that are coming up are starting to kind of see through, oh my gosh, working 80 hour weeks for no pay and being constantly stressed out and being overworked for very little reward. And I just feel like at the end of the day, the recognition that you get here is just insane. And that for me- The recognition you get here is just insane. You know what we don't really care about? I say we, I'm not a Gen Z, but you know what most people don't really care about is the recognition. They care about money. Notice how she didn't say that. How gross is it of just saying there's new people born every day? Like there's a billion people in the world or seven billion, whatever. And it's like, yeah, are those people one of age, which recruiting an 18 year old into an MLM straight to jail? Like you, girl, that's awful. And then also, which I mean, she's not, she's morally bankrupt anyways, we know that. And to be at the top of money and then to still stay in after this, you gotta be, right? You gotta be so brainwashed and morally bankrupt. But then are the people in like your, like your, your markets, like the place where they can join it, should they be sold to? A sign of a good salesperson is three things. Following up, four things. Follow up, being able to rebuild value and overcome objections, building relationships, and knowing when you should not sell to someone. Also though, with that number and with that type of ideology, I'm saying ideology instead of mindset because I hate the word mindset. Also as a joke for y'all, I bought a shirt at Target, it was on sale, that says manifest in big words because I think it's hilarious. Speaking of that, we actually do have merch. We have embroidered anti-girl boss tie-dyed hoodies and those are like actually like stitched embroidered. I have made all of these as cheap as I can through my merch provider, just so you know. 
I know influencer merch is expensive, I'm sorry. And then we have anti-girl boss crew neck sweaters or sweatshirts and then anti-girl boss short sleeve t-shirts and then stay spicy and then certified couch person is what it says on the back. We have stickers as well, trauma dump and chill. We have greeting cards that say your butt looks good. What well, on the front it says I have to tell you something and then on in tiny print it says your butt looks good on the inside. We have stay spicy glasses like this without the, the top. We have a delusional candle, which is appropriately unscented because your brain gets to decide what it smells like. That one's more of just a joke. Stay spicy mugs, new spicy hats, we still have the Trophy Wife merch. We still have our this one, our little mushroom merch, and it has the, the mushrooms down the arms. And then on the back, it says Stay Spicy. And then Stay Spicy Dad Hats and much more. So keep in mind all that's over there at ChelseaSuarez.com. And then also on my website, ChelseaSuarez.com, there is the free digital guide that's on there too. And I am forever updating it. And if you have purchased it previously, you will get an email when an updated version is available. Okay, thank you. It's a little, little promotional thing for myself. Is why it just excites me to see, I love, like I'm just like watching the comments go off, but I'm not actually reading any of them and I don't know what is going on, but somebody is, uh, somebody, yeah, anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love it here at the end of the day. Um, I, this is so corny, but I'm just gonna say it. This is, there's a Justin Bieber song. This is so corny. There's a Justin Bieber song with uh, Khalid, if you guys know his last album. And um, there's like one part, it's called the song As I Am. And I listen to the song and there's like one part in it that I get like teary eyed at because it just reminds me of my money business. Because if you're just tuning in, I was kind of saying at the beginning, there have been so many times in my business where I would try to talk myself out of it. But I just, like, I just, I kept going and I just, I said this in the beginning, I just kept showing up. I kept doing the work and things just kept happening. Um, and I still really feel that way. Like I still completely believe that. Um, so when I listen to the song, I, like, I get emotional because in the times where I doubted myself, maybe I was like going through like postpartum anxiety or postpartum depression, or, you know, I wasn't getting to show up as much as I wanted to. And I got really stressed out. Um, something great would happen in my business. Like somebody would hit a promotion, somebody would get a bonus, somebody would celebrate, you know, a really big feat and victory. And I've just always been pulled back into this. And I just really believe that I'm here to help people. Um, and what's so beautiful is like, once you build your business to a certain level. So she's talking more about the downline now, but one thing that's really interesting is that she, the way she just said that again is like saying the, the quiet part out loud or like in a way, like you're saying one thing, but realistically, like, because we know this is all about recruiting, it actually means something else. So she's like, yeah, you know, but I was maybe not having a good time or I was not feeling good and not focusing on my business. I took a step back, but then something good would happen for someone else. Someone else would get promoted. Someone else would blah, blah, blah. And then I'd get pulled back in. Well, that's weird because why would you get pulled back in when a colleague of yours did something good? Oh, because they're in your downline and you financially profit off of your downline. Okay. So it's that someone below her would hit another rank or do something good or celebrate something and therefore she would make more money. So then she'd be like, oh, hey, I need to like, you know, keep working at this and keep making it so other people are getting promoted so that I can continue this lifestyle and getting this money and blah, 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 right? You can really, um, not worry so much about yourself anymore. You can actually worry more about the success of others. And so for me, it's like, I feel like I'm at a place now where I have a, a developed and established business. It's been, it's been there. I want to continue growing upon it, but I really just want to focus on the women and men that come into the business from here on out and really helping them get where, to where they want to go and what they want to do. Um, and again, I, I love that people are kind of popping off on this live and talking and I don't know what you're saying, but it makes me know that like Monet has a pulse and Monet is here to stay and we're going to rustle some feathers and we're going to upset some people. But at the end of the day, that's really what- You get to a point where you can- not really have to focus on yourself and you can help others develop their business. Let's translate that from girl boss to the real world. Once you hit a certain rank, your success in the company and you maintaining your rank is based on you being able to have people below you rank up, developing other people's businesses. You're not a business consultant. Like, what are you talking about? No, stop, that's not it. Groundbreaking companies do. That's, that's how it goes from the beginning. We've always upset people. We've just always upset people because 
first we upset the hairstylists. And then also saying like, and I love that like y'all are going off in the comments. I don't know what you're saying, but like, I love it. Not all engagement is good engagement, especially when you're not profiting off of that. I mean, like with like YouTube and stuff like that, when you get paid for like views and engagement, that's different. But like, let's be honest, not all press is good press. Not all attention is beneficial for your business or the industry that you're in. Who were like, what are these products that people are coming in and selling? Um, and then we just upset the, uh, the anti-MLMers who just have this preconceived notion of what MLMs are. Um, we're going to translate again. We upset the hairstylists who were like, what are these products people come in here and sell? Come in here and sell to someone else's salon and just soliciting pyramid scheme products? No, not okay. You're probably upsetting the industry of, you know, aesthetics basically, but of hairstylists because people who don't know what the hell they're talking about have not gone to cosmetology school, do not like literally have no education from professionals in regards to hair and the science of it and the chemistry of it and all that jazz spouting off misinformation in order to sell a product that is not a professional product to professionals. And then we off the anti MLMers because they have a preconceived idea of what network marketing is, or rather a preconceived notion. And this is actually really funny because when I first heard her say that, I was like, let me make sure I have that definition like perfect, <laughs> very black and white before I start talking to Ish. But and I knew what it meant, but I wanted to like specifically, you know. So from vocabulary.com, preconceived notion, an opinion formed beforehand without adequate evidence. There is evidence. Numbers, statistics, all of that has been exposed. Y'all don't, y'all are not secretive. Y'all are not a vault of silence over there. You're putting it all out there yourselves. And we see the data, we see the cult tactics, we see the manipulation. Like we've no, we, it's, come on. <sighs> but again, they'll be like, we've well, never done it. I've never done meth either. And I know that's bad. I've never done Ozempic. And I know that I should not do it because one, I would just then not eat. <laughs> And I, I don't want to do that. No offense to anyone who is on it. I don't care. And then also like, I don't want to have to be on it for the rest of my life. And that's how I just feel like if I was on it, then that's what would happen. I don't have to specifically do something or partake in it myself and have that firsthand experience to be able to then point out things that are wrong with it, especially when all that information is already out there and other people have already experienced it. And I get that, but I love it here. I'm not changing. I'm not going anywhere. And it makes me really excited to see that people are so passionate about whatever I do and whatever we do. So another aspect of this, the like twist, not twisting of words, but like the manipulative way, I think, in my opinion, that and again, this is speculation of the way that she's speaking is like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm successful in this. It's because I work so hard. My team is successful. I keep coming back to it. I've been in it forever. Again, I'm not going anywhere. The, you know, reiterating, I feel like she had like bullet points that like she had to hit on and it's like say that you're not going anywhere say that it's the best time to join as it always has been my god it's not the best time to join every single second of every day literally not possible say the ceo is is not a cult leader say that anti-mlmers are wrong say that people shouldn't listen to other information because then they would be biased not how that works say that people who criticize you are failures and that if people aren't talking about you, then you won't be successful. Um, and I hope you continue to be this passionate because you just honestly fuel our fire and you keep us going. And if there's one thing I love to do. I love to just prove somebody wrong. I am fueled by proving others wrong. I've done it my whole life. And uh, yeah, so... I hope you learned something about me through this live. I hope you learned something about the company. We didn't even get into the products. This is more so like company culture, um, what we do. What do you know? You didn't even talk about the products because the products are irrelevant. Just like the CEO allegedly has said. Wondering um, about how it actually works. We are a no inventory company. So we don't, uh, we don't do inventory. So when you come in, you're not required to spend any like X amount of dollars on products. You're not required to spend X amount of money on products. Oh, but you do have to pay for a starter pack to join. Okay. For the people that have something to say about starting a business. Let me put this into perspective for you since you don't think I'm a business owner. For people who have something to say about starting a business. No, but you were just talking about joining an, a company, not starting a business. What are you, girl? Um, when I started my events rental business that I uh, launched in 2022, I probably invested about $30,000 all in just to get started, like just to like turn on the lights. We needed um, a trailer to move our inventory. We needed materials to build it out. And we needed a space. We needed a lot of things, uh, LLC paperwork, uh, insurance, right? So I invested $30,000 about that um, 
from money that I made from money. So um, when I started my money business, I invested $300 into shampoo, into a box of shampoo uh, that I used on my hair. And that was it. The rest was given with it. So my custom link that I sent to customers. The rest was given with it. Did they send you insurance and an LLC for your Monet business? No, they didn't. It's also just crazy that she's like literally comparing being a salesperson for a multi-level marketing company to running an actual business that isn't like primarily online where you have like tangible things that you are like renting out and selling and doing events. And like when you're a vendor, that doesn't make any sense. Like, what are you talking about? My back office where I still ch um, check my sales and my reports, uh, the, the community, the trainings, everything was included. Um, so for those that say that it's not a real business or you have to spend money to start it up, I know you've never started one before because you don't understand that you do need money to start a business. Nothing is ever free. Um, but the fact that I spent- Yes, you need money to s legally and actually create a business entity. And yes, there are ongoing expenses with any business, even if you are technically like completely digital, like I am, right? We got lots of expenses over here, okay? I don't know what accent that was and who I just got possessed by, but it was something. But the thing is, is that you're saying like one of the rebuttals or one of the objections rather is, oh, but you have to pay to start. Yeah, what people are saying is not you have to pay to start a business because yeah, that's a no brainer. You have to, you're paying to become an employee. That's not how that should work. So she's she's basically like arguing one a non point, but then she's arguing objection that like isn't even there. <laughs> it's very strange. Almost $2 million now in the seven years that I've been here. Um, I'll stick with my choices. You stick with yours and we'll just agree to disagree. Um, so I hope you learned something from this live. I hope you got something out of it. And um, what did you get out of this? What I got out of it is that she has made a lot of money and money, so she doesn't care. Well, she's made a lot of money off of her downline, so she doesn't care what other people say and that she's gonna stay with them because she continues to make money. Again, morally bankrupt in my opinion. And that's just my opinion. I'm not stating that as, a, that as a fact, no. I do like that she hasn't blocked me. She probably will after this video. I don't think I've ever done a video just responding to her, not responding, reacting to her. But yeah, this was this was a whole, a whole bunch of fallacies. I mean, we have a few right here actually are, since we didn't really like interject them during this video, but one that she did was the either or fallacy. And that is when someone is presented with only two options and must choose one. The two options appear to be mutually exclusive. However, additional logical analysis can reveal a third or more. Common forms of either or fallacy include false dilemma, binary thinking, false dichotomy. Straw man fallacy, attacking the person who's making the argument instead of the argument at hand and like the points they're actually making. That one kind of, because it's like, she didn't say this directly, but I'm paraphrasing here, but like, well, don't listen to the people who aren't successful at this or who criticize this because like they're not successful or they're lazy or you wouldn't want to trade lives with them or like they're just jealous, right? She didn't say that, but in my opinion, like she's alluding to that. In like a roundabout way, kind of, or an indirect way, another one is that we haven't talked about much is appeal to tradition because she's saying like, I've been in this company for so long and I've been making money for so long with this company and I'm gonna stay in it for the, she said the rest of her life. Oh, girl, what? That's insane. But yeah, saying things like that. So you're gonna do this no matter how like effed up it gets or how uh, how many things happen that like clearly you should get out and how many warning signs there are or how it's clearly like crumbling to the ground and burning and I'm just laughing about it because it's always made you money because you got in at the beginning and because you have a massive downline. And then of course, this video from her was full of false analogies as well. False analogy is a logical fallacy where two things that may share some similarities are assumed to be alike in other respects without sufficient evidence. This flawed reasoning suggests that because two things are similar in one way, they must be similar in all ways, even if the comparison does not hold up under scrutiny. So that is going to be it for this video. I will continue to update y'all on and comment on, of course, because I can't shut up, on the calamity, the chaos that is taking place 
with money because it is not only like embarrassing, but sad. And listen, like I said, these people might be morally bankrupt. They might like not be the best people in the world, but truly seeing people stick to their guns so, so much, have it ruin friendships, ruin their families, ruin other people financially, ruin their reputations. Like it's so uncomfortable. I can't look away, obviously, and I never will, but it's so uncomfortable and so sad. But again, it's such a great example that's happening in real time of this industry being so culty and the absolute insane grasp that it has on people is crazy. I'm still here. Thank you again, Merge Dragons, for sponsoring this video. Be sure to click the link in my description box to download Merge Dragons for free today. And let me know what level y'all are on. I'm gonna go hang out with my baby. Uh, we actually have to go run some errands. I am probably just gonna go ahead and keep this wig on for the rest of the day. Cause it's like real stuck on there. So I guess that's what we'll do. I appreciate you. Make sure you check out chelseasuarez.com for the new merch that we put out. And also like tag me on Instagram pictures of it too, or like send me some. Cause I'd love to like put that on the website too, if you want, maybe, I don't know, or even just on Instagram. Okay, let's take a deep breath. Do you feel better? I do not. Okay. All right. Your butt looks good. I'll see you in my next video. Like and subscribe and comment. And remember to leave down below how long you think like the life expectancy, the remaining life expectancy of money is. Like, do you think they're gonna absolutely shut their doors in like the next year, next two years? What do you think? Okay, I'll see you later. Goodbye.